morning, Stitchy people. How are you today? It is Thursday, July 30th. It's almost the end of July. Uh, I'm Jesse. This is Miss Lee Pages, and uh, thank you for checking me out. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming back, and if you're brand new, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. This is the place where I talk about um, all of my stitchy goodness. I'm going to try not to have my hands on the table because it's shaking my camera. <laughs> This is where I talk about all of my stitchy goodness, um, all of my cross-stitching stuff, the uh, the things that I'm working on, the plans that I have, the, um, the stitchy stuff that I have purchased, um, and all of that fun stuff. So thank you so much for checking me out. Um, as you may recall, last time we talked, it was just before 24 Hours of Cross-Stitch weekend, so this will be my post-24 Hours of Cross-Stitch wrap-up. Uh, that's the primary thing I'll be talking about today. I'll also talk about some plans uh, for the next couple of months. So um, with that, let's get right into it. So I don't have any happy mail today, unfortunately. I haven't gotten anything new, um, but that's also a sign of me posting videos more often, so that's kind of a good thing. Um, but yeah, I showed you my stickers of the month from uh, Britta Thompson at Zenspire Designs last time, so I don't have any new stickers yet. And I'm still waiting for word on um, the latest Kate to see if she's still shipping out those um, uh, those little three by, not three by five, five by seven cards um, printouts. So yeah. So no happy mail. Uh, what have I been listening to? I actually did. I listened to an audiobook, <laughs> like 30 minutes of an audiobook. But even so, I listened to an audiobook. Um, so I went back to um, Slouching Towards Bethlehem, which is a collection of essays from Joan Didion um, that I learned about from Will Wheaton through Goodreads. Um, so I decided to pick that up quite a while ago, and I really enjoyed listening to it. Diane Keaton voices or, or narrates the book, um, and I love the way she reads Joan Didion's voice. Now, I don't know how Joan Didion actually sounded in real life, um, but if she sounded anything the way that Diane Keaton reads her, um, she's just incredibly interesting um, and a very just... I don't know. The the voice is just really cool. Um, and I mean voice from a writing perspective, not necessarily like speaking voice perspective. So um, I'm still in the, the the titular essay, which is Slouching Towards Bethlehem, uh, which is um, a lot to do with the hippie community in the Haight-Ashbury in California um, back in the 70s. So I'm still about halfway through that essay. It's probably the longest essay in the entire book. Um, so at some point I'll actually finish that essay and move on to the rest of the book. It's probably also the most dense essay um, of all of the essays that I've listened to so far from the book. And um, I think there's just so much going on because the culture is so trippy and the things that are happening are so surreal. Um, so it's, it's just a very different kind of story. So it's taken me a little while to really get through it, but I actually did listen to an audiobook. Um, I also watch a lot of TV, because <laughs> what do you do when you're doing 24 hours of cross-stitch? Um, I will say, I meant, I meant to mention at least one or two videos ago, I watched um, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, which I think um, originally aired on NBC. I watched it on Hulu. I watch a lot of my stuff on Hulu and Netflix these days. Um, so I only just watched the season that I believe came out earlier this year, but it was really good. Like, I didn't expect it to be good. I thought it was going to be a silly sitcom, but it's actually, it's got a lot of deep stuff going on, a lot of deep character development and dealing with real life stuff. Um, it also has Lauren Graham, who is one of my favorite actresses. I love her. Um, it's got a lot of really cool people in it, really, really cool actors. Some decent representation, probably not enough representation, um, but it's um, it's just really good. The music is fun. Um, they do all these dance numbers and stuff because the premise is that this poor girl somehow got um, music stuck in her head when she was having an MRI, and so now she sees and hears people's deepest thoughts portrayed in song all around her. So her friends will just break into song and dance numbers for no reason. Um, and that's her understanding what's going on inside them at the time. And then wackiness ensues. So <laughs> um, if you're looking for something to watch, I think it's about 10 or 11 episodes. You will need tissues um, at points, but it's, it's worth a watch. So I did want to mention that. And now we'll move on. Uh, I'm going to try to do this segment more about audiobooks than television going forward, just so you know, because I do actually do things other than watch TV, just FYI. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. So 
Um, I actually, I didn't, I didn't pull my app out before, so I'll have to, I'll have to open that up here in a second. Um, I did not make 24 hours. Um, I'll, I'll just put that up. Spoiler alert, didn't make 24 hours. Um, I tried really hard, but um, the migraine that I had Thursday reared its ugly head again and again over the course of the weekend. So I did the best that I could, but I was having a really hard time, um, especially because I think part of my part of my headache issues are having to do with drinking enough water and eating food at regular intervals, um, which for whatever reason is becoming very difficult for me um, working from home. The water thing is incredibly hard, um, which seems silly, but at work, my general, when I was in the office, my general schedule was fix a 16 ounce cup of coffee first thing in the morning. Um, once that is gone, go fill my big like 32 ounce thermos with, um, with ice water, drink that all the rest of the day, probably refill it once or twice. So I was drinking a lot of water because that was pretty much, I'd have one cup of coffee, drink water the rest of the day. Here at home, I'll have to fix my coffee in the morning and then I may not drink anything else for the rest of the day. Um, I might have a couple of cups of coffee. So um, I'm, I'm not doing a lot of, um, not doing enough self-care as it were. So if this arm is bothering me, let me just slide that down. Oh, I also meant to, uh, I meant to point out my fuzzy co-host today. So um, this is Momo. <laughs> um, my kitties don't normally like to be on camera, at least not where you can actually see them for any length of time um but little miss momo she's like my little shadow and lately she's been extra fussy and i think it's because there there was a box with a blanket in it just on the other side of my laptop and so during the day she would usually hop in that box and she'd sleep there all day um and we don't have a lot of interaction because my cats will go do their stuff you know, they'll go sleep wherever. Um, they like to be in the room with me, but they're not the kind of cats that necessarily want to be in my lap all the time or with me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for whatever, I guess because I stole her box, Momo has been like fussy and not being settled and she won't just find a place to sleep. So I finally put a blanket in this chair next to me and this morning she, she took the bait and she's apparently gonna sleep there with her face in the back of the chair. So. <laughs> Uh, and just uh, as a side note, so I call her Momo. That's not her appropriate name. Her full name is Morrigan. She's named after um, a Celtic goddess. Um, and I'm trying to remember. Morrigan is sort of an interesting goddess. She's the goddess of battle and war and these sorts of things. Um, and depending on who you talk to, she's incredibly scary. Um, and maybe evil, but not quite evil. Mostly it's just she's like battle and war are um but there are also other versions of morrigan that are less scary um regardless um when we got this tiny little cat and i decided that she was elegant and she needed to be named morrigan um then she showed her personality was tiny and cute and she needed a tiny cute name so she's momo <laughs> um two of our cats are named after deities one of our cat is cats is named after the moon <laughs> so um yeah so that's how these things go i like cats so back to 24 hours of cross stitch so um i really want to hear about you uh, all the plans that you all had and um how you did for the weekend if you participated in that kind of stuff so make sure to leave me comments um i definitely want to know how everything went for you all I had really, really, really hoped to hit 24 hours this time. Um, and depending on how you count things, I hit 20 hours. Um, and the reason I say depending on how you count things is because I, during those times when my head hurt too much to actually deal with the cross stitch, I was doing cross stitch related things. So I got a little bit waylaid because I was dealing with Pattern Keeper or getting my pattern into um, the system and crossing off the stuff I had already done. So that's part of it, which is set up um, according to some people, or not according to some people, but some people will include set up with their cross stitching time. So, um, and then on Saturday, I think it was when um, the headache was really bad, I was actually just sitting and bobbinating floss for my Chinese Zodiac. So again, it's cross stitch related. So depending on how you count these things, um, you know, I got 20 hours in for the weekend, but let me see how much time I actually got stitching, like actual stitching time. I want to say it's about 13 hours and 51 minutes actually stitching, but I need to check my statistics and I can't do it one handed. Okay. Do, 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 do. 
So yeah, 20 hours and one minute if I include all of the setup time and that sort of stuff. Um, but actual stitching time was 13 hours and 51 minutes. So I got just under 14 hours. So actual stitching time is less than last 24 hours cross stitch, which is disappointing. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and I had a conversation with Rachel at Rachel Ray Craft um, over the weekend. And I, I told her, and I believe this, that you know, it's really at the point at which it becomes a chore and it becomes unenjoyable and it's stressing you out, that's the point at which you need to chill and kind of back off. So 24 hours of cross stitch is meant to be a challenge. It's not meant to be something that you can just do lickety split. Um, it's meant to be challenging, but um, it's not meant to make you sad. It's not meant to make you upset that you couldn't meet your goals and beat yourself up and that kind of stuff. So I'm human. Um, I had some issues over the weekend, these migraines and headaches, uh, you know, if you talk to me outside of YouTube, you know that this is a thing I've been dealing with for a couple of months now. So I'm hoping to sometime soon figure out what's going on and get it under control, but it's, it's definitely impacting my life. So, um, but yeah, I'm human and you know, we have issues. So I didn't get my 24 hours in, but I got a lot of work in and I'm, I'm proud of the work that I did. So with that, let us talk about what I did. So um, if you watched the last video, you've seen my, my um, you've seen where I was starting from on all of these. So the first thing that my Tiny Decisions wheel told me that I was gonna stitch on was Grimm's Fairy Tales. So this is where I got, I was hoping to get farther um, because there's actually, so this is not quite finished for March's pattern. So my little children still need, they still need their cheeks. They don't have their cheeks. Um, the old woman is finished. The house, I believe, yes. The house is finished, the tree is finished, and I think this border is two thirds of the way finished. There are some uh, lighter colored, lighter colored flowers that come out. Excuse me. Um, and then there are also a couple of letters. And I think another one of these type of motifs goes here. So I got really close to finishing March, but I didn't actually get all the way done with March. So that was about, well, it was, um, so most of these were four hours of stitching. This was four hours of stitching. I stopped after four hours and I switched to a new, new project. So that's Grimm's. Um, the second thing that Tiny Decisions told me that I needed to stitch was my Chinese Zodiac. Um, so I worked, I actually worked on this longer. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know why. <laughs> so uh, once I got started on this, I started, I started this Friday night and I worked for about two hours and then I picked it up again Saturday morning and I got all settled on the couch and was stitchy and everything was comfortable and two kitties came to lay with me while I was stitching. So Momo was on the back of the sofa uh, behind my head and Loki, who never or rarely ever wants to cuddle, was cuddled up against my leg. So I went for longer than four hours total on this because I had two cats and I wasn't going to disturb them. So I think I did about five hours of actual stitching on this one. And um, so you'll see that there is most of a tiger there now. Um, and our little bull is mostly finished. Um, I will, I made a mistake with the bull. I don't know if it'll be noticeable um, at the end. Um, but since each of these little animals is kind of separate from the others, um, I figured I could just leave the mistake in there and it's really not going to affect anything. I just have to adjust the pattern slightly. I'm sorry, my hands are, I can't hold this still. <laughs> and I'm trying to get it to focus. Is it, it's not focusing. Focus. Okay. Well, it is what it is. You'll also see I have, I'm trying to just get this done because I'm, I'm doing this before work this morning. So <laughs> um, You'll also see I have this uh, red border. This is about a quarter of the total border. It's gonna go all the way around. Um, if you've seen the pattern, there's actually motifs out here and down here now. Um, but obviously my, my, um, my tenant hoop is not gonna allow for that. And I'm, I'm kind of confused as to why because I thought that the design would fit within 10 inches. Now, obviously you don't have 10 inches across the top here or across the bottom, so I get that. So maybe that's what it is. Um, my brain doesn't do spatial stuff 
terribly well sometimes. So anyway, um, so yeah, the ratty has, um, he has a little bit of a nose now too. I added that. Um, but mostly finishing out the ox, um, adding the tiger, and um, I spent a lot, a lot of time on this border. <laughs> so obviously, um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it in this hoop as I work on it, because this, um, this border should fit all the way around, um, I think. Um, so I'll do, I'll do this border and everything inside the border, inside the hoop, and then I'll have to take it out and figure out how to do the corners. Um, cause the, I don't think this piece of fabric is actually big enough to put on a Q snap that would be large enough for me to see the, the corners to work on them. So that'll be a fun adventure, but I'm going to do this part first and, and go from there. So once I actually started working on it, it's funny cause I put this down, um, several months ago, obviously, because I think I wasn't, I think the color changes, the color changes were kind of making me frustrated. Um, and so I put it down and I haven't touched it since, but when I picked it up, I actually found it really enjoyable to stitch. So I did not mind stitching on it for extra because I was having a really good time. So I might get back into this pretty soon. Um, so that is the Chinese Zodiac. This is Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I should actually, I keep forgetting to tell you about the fabrics and stuff. Um, if you've been watching for a while, you might remember what these fabrics are. If you haven't been watching for a while, let me tell you what these fabrics are. So this is a gorgeous, um, this is an 18 count Ada that I got from Mystic Fabrics, um, Misty at Mystic Fabrics. Um, this is not a named color so far as I know. I got it on a Sunday listing, but it is actually in person. It is the um, about the same color as the Jade, that, uh, which I think was from Picture This Plus, um, that's called for for this pattern. Um, it's coming up much bluer on screen than it actually is. And you'll see I have my Be a Nice Human, it's over here, Be a Nice Human um, needle minder, that's a word, um, the needle minder that I got from Inconsiderate Stitch um, off Etsy. So that is that fabric. Um, the flosses are mostly DMC, and then there's three Weeks Dye Works colors. Um, this is very splash. This is my favorite week style work so far. And then there's a slightly darker pink, which I think is this one. And I can't remember what it's called. And then there's the really light one that's called Cherub. So there's three weeks on that one. Um, <clears throat> and the rest is DMC. And then this is also, this is Frosted Pumpkin. Oh, and the pattern is from Clouds Factory. I will, at some point, I'll remember all the words I need to say. Okay, so this pattern is Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Chinese Zodiac. This fabric is Picture This Plus. I can't remember the color. Um, I want to say Heartland, but I think Heartland is actually the Animal Almanac color. So um, regardless, if you go to Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, it'll tell you what the called for fabric is. I bought the full kit for this, so everything I have was the called for everything. <clears throat> and Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery put it together for me. So um, this is Etoile. This entire design, the rest of it is DMC. And then we've got the picture of this plus 28 Cashel Linen is what that is. Um, it turns out I'm not a huge fan of linen unless it's cashel because cashel apparently is really, um, really nice to work on. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about linen that's not nice to work on here in a second. <laughs> okay, so once I finally decided to switch from Chinese Zodiac, um, I, uh, the Tiny Decisions Wheel told me to work on Chinese Zodiac again, which I thought was hilarious because I had already worked on it longer than I was supposed to. So I spun it a, another time and it told me yoga corns. So the last thing I worked on for 24 hours of cross stitch was yoga corns. And I'm going to tell you before I show you this, um, I actually have worked on it more since 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, so for my actual, um, end of 24 hours of cross stitch progress, check out my Instagram. I did post a, I made a post right at the end of my, my day for set for Sunday. Um, so this is a little bit farther along, but look at that. Look at that. I'm going to try to get it to actually focus. If I put my head behind the thing, it might focus. Are you going to, I can't. Okay. I'm struggling y'all. I'm on the struggle bus today. I apologize. It doesn't. Okay, hopefully, is it going to focus? Ugh. Okay, I guess that's as good as it's going to get. So, um, it's kind of difficult to see the yoga corn in all of that because the back stitching is not there yet, obviously. But I actually have, at this point, 
Um, I have stitched all but three colors on this particular yoga corn. So this one is almost done with the actual X's. Um, the three colors left are three karinic colors. Um, you may be able to tell I already have one of the karinic colors in here. It's gold. Um, it's a pretty deep gold. Um, so um, I, I like to call it devil floss. <laughs> um, some folks say that karinic is easier to work with than DMC metallics. Um, I would actually say that I think I prefer DMC metallics to karinic. Um, just because Krynic you use one strand and it's a pretty thick strand um, and I think DMC metallic you can actually separate the strands so you can decide how much or how little um, metallic you want this you're just kind of stuck with that thickness and it's it's pretty thick um, but uh, it does leave oh, yeah, it does give some nice effects so I'm curious to see um, or I'm anxious to see how the rest of the Krynic will look in here um, so this yoga corn is actually almost done, um, significantly more than four hours in here because I think I got, um, I believe I put in more than four hours during 24 hours of cross stitch and then I've stitched on it some additional um, since then. So um, I don't actually time myself outside of 24 hours of cross stitch so I'm not sure how much time I put in. I just know that I'm almost done with this yoga corn so that's really, really exciting. Um, I think what I'm going to do now that 24 hours of cross stitch is over, um, what I'm going to do, um, yeah, let's just talk about plans now. So what I'm going <laughs> to, what I'm going to do at this point, um, is I'm going to finish these three chronic colors. Um, we'll see how long that takes because ideally I want to be done with this today or tomorrow, preferably today. Um, so I want to finish the three chronic colors. I may try doing the back stitch before I put this away. We'll see how long that takes. Um, but once I finish that, I'm going to put this away for a while. So, um, actually, let me back up a second. I am all over the place. I apologize, guys. My brain is just, my brain is just whatever. So, fabric, um, this particular fabric is another Misty fabric. This is, uh, this colorway is called Unipoo. This is a 32 count linen. Um, I don't know that she necessarily specifies what type of linen when you order linen. So you get 28 count, you get 32 count, you get whatever count, but I don't think she um, states whether it's gonna be Cashel or Belfast or what have you. Um, so this linen is much thicker. Um, individual strands are thicker than on the Cashel. And um, so probably if I did some research, I could figure out what kind of linen this is based on the way the fibers are and everything like that. And originally when I got this, I liked that the linen was thicker um, because it makes it a little bit closer to even weave to work with. Um, but the problem I'm having, have had since I've been reworking on yoga corns is that um, the fibers are so close together that it's difficult to, and because they're not, evenly and consistently, they're not even in consistent thicknesses, um, the fact that the fibers are so close together is actually making me have to count and recount and recount because I can't just go one, two and know that I'm going over two with even weave. It's super easy because everything is very consistent. With linen, I have to really make sure that I'm only going over two or that I have gone over two because sometimes the fibers are super thick and sometimes the fibers are super thin. And so even with my uh, reading glasses and everything to help me magnify stuff. It's it's been a struggle So um, I found that the cash linen was so much easier to work on than this was But I still love this color. It's fantastic I mean, I just and you haven't even you don't even see all of this that's over here There's there's it's just gorgeous the whole piece is gorgeous and I've been doing my best to make sure that I can save as much of um you know, as much workable fabric as I can. There's a nice piece that's um, folded up here, so I'll have lots of extra. Um, and the way I had originally intended to stitch yoga corns, there's three separate unicorns, so I had intended to stitch them side by side by side. But I'm thinking now, um, also because I hate moving a Q-snap, um, is I might do the first yoga corn, the second yoga corn, and then put the third down here, because I think that will actually give me more usable fabric overall but maybe not because if i do them all the way across then i have a nice big piece down this way if i do them square like this i'll have a smaller piece down here and then an extra side piece so i don't know um, i have 
one and I have a whole yoga corn to stitch before I get to the point where I try to decide what I'm going to do with that third yoga corn. So that. Okay. <clears throat> that is, that is 24 hours of cross stitch. So let's go back to plan. So like I said, I want to finish working on this. Um, I want to get this to, I want to get this yoga corn to a state of relative finish. I'd prefer to get the back stitch in there because then I won't have to worry about that yoga corn when I go back to it, whenever that is, um, I'll be able to start fresh on the next yoga corn. So I want to do that, but, um, August needs to be the month that I focus on my model stitch. Um, so I have, I have, um, not put very many stitches in on it and I apologize. My neighbor has decided to mow his grass right now. Um, so if you're hearing that buzzing, I'm sorry for that. Um, but I need to work on my model stitch. Um, it's technically not due till September, but um, I think mid-September. But if I can get it done um, as soon as possible in August, that will be awesome and get that shipped out. So um, that's going to be my main focus for August. I'm not even going to give myself a whole bunch of other plans or anything like that for the entire month of August because I need to get that finished. Once I get that finished, um, then I can think about other fun things to do. The only other thing I'm going to add to my August plans um, are, or is, are, is, the only thing I'm going to add is, grammar, um, <laughs> my tiny overlord stitch. So that is, I should have brought it, um, I showed it last time. I didn't get much further on it. Um, I did a little bit more stitching Thursday, maybe Thursday. Anyway, since I posted, I did a little bit more stitching, but not much. So I want to finish that um, in August if I can. Pardon me for the sip. Um, but yeah, so those will be my only two things. But I am gonna I'm gonna pull out the model stitch and I'm gonna work on it first um, before I put more stitches in on Tiny Overload. I'm sorry, the camera's bouncing. I don't know why it's so sensitive. Anyway, so yeah, um, finish yoga corn the one yoga corn, um, then model stitch for a bit, and then I'll probably pull out tiny, um, tiny overlord again, try to finish it back to model stitch. Once model stitch is done, then I'll be free to do whatever I would like to, um, after that. So though there may be another model stitch in my future, we'll see. Um, we'll see how she likes the first one. <laughs> um, in September, there are a couple of new stitch alongs. Or actually, there's a new stitch along coming along this week. I think it starts starts tomorrow. No, starts on Saturday. The Woodland Woodland Creatures SAL from um, Four Boys and an NL Girl um, that starts very very soon. Um, I've seen a preview of the first pattern and it looks like it's going to be super cute. I think it's designed to be a set of ornaments um, based on cute woodland creatures. So um, I may get in on that, but probably not until September, or October, um, because again, model stitch. Um, and then I know on August 1st, the supply list for the, oh, let me see if I can get this right. It's Autumn Lane Stitchery. Um, and this has been a big deal stitch along um, in the community. So if you're, if you're connected to much of anybody that I know, you've already heard about this, but it's um, the Undersea Queen Stitch Along Dark, Queen something. I, I don't have that right at all. So um, you're probably screaming at me telling me what it is. Um, regardless, that starts, um, the actual stitch along starts September 1st, but the supply list comes out um, this week. So I'll be checking that out. That's not something I am positive I'm going to join in on quite yet, or at least I don't have a specific date that I'm going to start. Chances are I won't be starting September 1st. I want to see what the first pattern looks like. Um, I do like Autumn Lane. They have some really awesome patterns and based on my suspicions for what the stitch along will be, I think I'm going to like it. I think I'm going to be into it, but I'm, I'm waiting to see. So I haven't purchased the, um, the fabric yet. Um, and I need to see what the, um, what the specialty flosses are. I do know that there's a specific gorgeous fabric to go with this from under the sea, um, under the sea fabrics. Maybe that's where I'm getting Under Sea Queen from. Um, Under the Sea Fabrics has done an exclusive color specifically for the stitch along. And that color is worth buying regardless of whether you do the stitch along. So check that out. Um, so yeah, in September, uh, I get to 
to kind of rethink where I'm going to go with the rest of the year. Um, the stitch alongs at this point, none of those are going to get done by the end of the year, except for yoga corns. I do hope to finish yoga corns by the end of 2020. Um, but the others, my year longs, oh, yeah, so those will all probably go into 2021. Um, yeah, so I haven't really thought about what I'm doing in September. Um, I will say for October, I have a couple of plans. I don't know if you all are familiar with Caroline Off the Grid, um, Off the Grid Needle Arts, but um, she also is part of Evertote, which I have to get an Evertote, y'all. Um, anyway, <clears throat> she does this thing called high tea, um, and she was doing it monthly in previous years, but this year she's only doing it quarterly, which works for me. Um, and the whole idea of high tea, if you haven't ever heard of it before, um, high tea is... Um, now the beginning of the month once every three months so the last one was july 1st the next one should be october 1st um, and the idea is that you pull something special from your stash that you've been saving for a special occasion to work on or you just have some really awesome floss or some beautiful fabric that you want to put to use that you've been saving um, something special something you've been holding on to or um, you have a new start that you're really excited about or something special basically it's like it's a time to celebrate those special things that you have just acquired or have been holding on to for a while um, to take those out and work on them and enjoy them. So I do have, um, I have a couple of high tea starts that I'll be working on over the next couple of high teas, but October um, is particularly special for me. I have a pattern, um, and I'll talk about this more in detail closer to time, but I have a pattern. Um, it's actually a whole kit that I purchased from Misty last year. Um, it's a Glendon Place kit with Dinky Dyes silks. Very special kit um, that has a quote about um, because someone I love in heaven, there's a, because someone we love is in heaven, there's a little bit of heaven in our home. And I can't even talk about it without, but those of you who've been following me for a while, you know, I lost my mom in 2017. Try not to get it. Anyway, October is her birthday. October is a high tea. So I have that pattern and I'm going to work on that in October. So I'll talk more about that later and hopefully I won't get quite so choked up about it. Anyway. <laughs> so let's move on um those are the plans for now um obviously i'll keep you updated um i don't know how much um how much whip progress i'll have to show you uh during august because like i said i'll be focusing on my model stitch and uh, i can't show that to you <laughs> so i won't be able to show you any of that progress but um i'll i'll obviously have haul and stuff um because there's always there's always purchases and stuff speaking of which let's get into some now so uh, last week or last video all I had was fabric this time all I have is floss <laughs> which you know is nothing to sneeze at especially because I'm looking at this pile of flosses I have from Kathy and it's it's pretty significant um, but let's start with um, let's start with color and cotton so um, I mentioned before they had to take June off um, because of supply issues um, so they have started back strong in July. I got my package earlier this week or late last week. Um, so super awesome. I get the three, um, the three neutrals or primitives. What do they call it? Um, they call it primitive slash neutral. So that's perfect. Um, so I get three of the primitives and I get five of the brights. So these are the, um, these are the primitives. And they're really pretty. It's almost like a primitive version of red, white, and blue, isn't it? So, um, let's see, we've got chestnut. If I can get it to. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So, chestnut, antique rose, and battleship. I guess it does work better if I do that. Okay, battleship. Let me just pause for a second. Okay, sorry about that. I had to I had to pause just so I could, you know, wipe my nose. Y'all don't need to see that. <clears throat> That's why you should not get emotional on camera because it causes issues. Um, and here are the brights. And it's funny because the brights that I get, it's like they know what colorways or like the, the general 
feeling that they've been sending me, so they keep sending me like different shades of the same colors, which I'm not not mad at. It's just funny because it keeps seeming like I get the same colors over and over, but they really are different. <laughs> and I love this purple one. It looks very similar to like the April one that I got. So those are really pretty. Let's go through them one by one. So we have Mermaid's Folly. There we go. Really pretty. And this one is interesting. So this is Lagoon. So this is like a dark... Um, it's like a navy blue that blends up into this green. It's interesting. And this is Rock Candy. Just coming out. Everything, all the pink things come out more pink. There we go. And this one is Jasmine. I always like the purples. The purples are always my favorite. This is very similar to the color that um, I am using on my Be Well and Stitch uh, mini bouquet. And then this is a gorgeous, gorgeous red, Bing Cherry. And it's of course blowing out. Come on, you. Oh, guys. There we go. Um, so it's actually a richer, deeper red in person, but it's coming off as a bright red. Um, but it's actually really, really gorgeous. This is be fantastic for um, rich Christmas stuff, uh, Christmas stitch stuff. So I wish it was coming off more true because that bright doesn't do it justice. It's a gorgeous, rich, deep red. Um, so those are my coloring cottons for July. It's exciting to get those back again. And I think I mentioned this before, but I love their, their tags, the way they're doing the tags now, because um, they're already set up for you to put them on a ring. So it's really, really awesome. Makes it easy for me to store them because that's how, I don't know if you can see it, or, or directions. So these are my previous color and cottons right here. That's all the color and cottons right there. It looks kind of ugly um, the way the camera's doing it because you can't see all the pretty colors. I think I might have the primitives on top. That might be why it's, um, it's not coming off as bright. But um, I put all of them on a ring so I can keep them together. So that makes it super easy now. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, Kathy. Dying for cross stitch, Kathy Davidson. So I did get a couple of silks um, during one of her Sunday listings. Um, it is always fighting tooth and nail to be able to get any of the cottons or silks <laughs> on Sundays. Um, and so when I uh, when I saw her postings, I actually skipped the cottons and went straight for the silks because I knew she doesn't re-dye the silks at all. She only re-dyes the cottons. So um, there are some cottons that she listed that particular Sunday that I will be waiting anxiously for for re -dyes. There was a really deep royal purple that I am super into um, that I will have to see if I can get on a re -dye. But the ones that I did win, so these again are silk. These are not cotton, and of course it's going to blow out. So these are not at all what they look like on screen. <laughs> so this looks like a super bright red and a teal. Um, this is actually um, a deeper, not quite a, a wine red, um, but it, it's deeper similar to, but not as rich as the, the um, Bing Cherry. And the, uh, the what looks like teal is actually more of a Christmas green. <laughs> but um, those are the silks that I got. They're really pretty. Um, I don't think she, yeah, she doesn't name those. And then I got a bunch of cotton re dyes. Um, these just came in, and now that I'm seeing them in person, I'm wishing I had ordered different amounts of different stuff. But when I saw them on the computer, I wasn't sure. So, ugh, it is what it is. So, um, this color is called Citrus, which is a nice blending of various yellows and oranges. It's coming off a little green. Um, which I guess there is a tinge of green in that particular yellow. Yeah, so that's citrus, um, which I don't know. The colors look different on the screen than I, or at least my memory of the colors looks different than in person. So um, I'm okay with only having gotten one skein. And these are 50 yard skeins, I believe. That's how she sells them, either in 10 or 50. Um, this color is really cool, though not quite as vibrant as I uh, remember seeing on the computer. So this is called Gerber. Actually, that's what I, <laughs> what you're seeing on the screen is sort of what I remember seeing on the computer screen when I purchased this. It's not quite as fluorescent in person. 
So that's Gerber. It looks really bright. So that's probably not at all her fault. If my camera makes it look fluorescent, then her camera probably did too. So, um, again, it's a beautiful colorway, and I really like, um, I think probably the way I'm seeing it in person is going to be a much more usable um, colorway than that fluorescent <laughs> that you're seeing. <laughs> I like this magenta up top too. It's, um, it's a little bit more toned down in person than it is on screen. It's like really blowing out. Um, this colorway is one that I wish I had gotten more of because now that I'm seeing it in person, I really, really like it. Part of it is it's got that, that bright blue and purple mixed together that I really love. So this is called Mandarin. Maybe if I hold it for my face, it'll focus a little bit better. So this has like all the colors. So this purple and this blue, this purple going into this blue is one of my favorite, favorite things that she does. Um, I actually have... Uh, might only be one skein, 50 yards skein, but I have some floss that I'm using for my linen and threads that is this into this, and it's my favorite thing. Favorite, favorite. But I like the green into the blue, the red and the orange. I like that it's all the colors. So, it's really, really nice. I wish I had gotten one or two more skeins. But I keep trying to remind myself, 50 yards is a lot of floss, y'all. 50 yards is a lot of floss. So, an individual skein of DMD, DMC is 8 yards. So 50 yards is like five and a half of those. Is my math correct? No. It's six of those plus a little extra. Oh, Mama's getting active. She ran away. Bye, Mama. Um, <laughs> so a 50 yard skein is equivalent to um, six plus yard or six plus skeins of DMC. And for most of the things that I have ever done, I have never needed a full skein of DMC. So trying to put it into perspective for myself. So I keep thinking, oh, I need, I need three 50 yard skeins of this, only if I'm doing a long dog in one color. <laughs> the only time you need, probably the only time ever that you need more than a 50 yard skein of any of these colors is if you're doing something like a long dog sampler in a single color, then you need several. several. Still trying to decide on my pandemic color, y'all. 400 yards, or is it 400 meters? like 350 yards or meters, I don't know. Um, regardless, it's a lot of floss, y'all. So, still trying to pick my color. Okay, moving on. Last but not least, I did get two skeins of this color, and this is called Cranberries, which I thought was a really interesting colorway. I love it when she does these darks into lights like this. So this is super nice. I think this will actually um, complement or um, at least coordinate well with, um, I want to say it's Phoenix, Phoenix Rising or something like that. It's a colorway she did, um, not this past month, but the previous month, I think, which has darker but similar um, tones in it. I think those two would work well together. So that might be something I do too, is I might take some of these, uh, something like this, with some coordinating colors, because there's Phoenix and there's something else that I actually got coordinating solids with. So if this coordinates with all of those, then this with all of that might actually be enough to do pandemic, maybe. I still need a piece of fabric for pandemic. So yeah, that's a thing that will come eventually. Um, I'd like to, I'd really like to be able to do that, start it in 2020, but 2020 is getting short, y'all. Real, real short. Um, because we're already, August is two days away, um, and in my brain, um, that means it's almost the end of the year. Because <laughs> August is two days away, and then it'll be September, and the next thing you know, it's October or November. Um, oh, the other thing I meant to mention, because scattered brain. So in October, the nice thing is, when it's time for high tea, um, I'm going to be going, theoretically, assuming COVID doesn't ruin it this time. Um, theoretically, I'm going to be going on vacation shortly after that, like within days. Um, so I'll have hopefully a week of time to just chill and stitch and, and do whatever. So that'll be really, really nice. Um, especially because I'm going to do that commemorative piece for my mom. So that'll be fun. Um, and I will say our plans, our vacation plans for October are significantly simpler than our plans for early. Because we had all kinds of plans. This was going to be the year of travel. It was the year of the SAL and it was the year of travel. Um, and the only thing we got to do, we did get to go to San Antonio in January. And that was the last thing we got to do. We were going to go to Hawaii in April. We were going to go to Vegas and then Ohio in June. 
and then potentially um, I was going to go to Ireland in September and then we tried to maybe replace some of those plans with Germany in December but um, I don't think Americans are going to be allowed to go anywhere um, for a while so <laughs> nowhere outside of the country for a while um, so our plans for October were we're actually just gonna go um, to a place about three hours away from here so assuming that our state doesn't lock us down and the next state over doesn't lock us down then hopefully we'll still be able to go on vacation in October plus our vacation is basically going to a rental house and hanging out with ourselves um, not interacting with other people so it'll be a nice socially distanced vacation so hopefully fingers crossed y'all yeah so that is I think that's it for me this time um, so it's a little bit shorter than usual um, I did ramble a lot so I hope that was okay um, but yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up I don't think I have anything else to tell you or show you so um, yeah so next time you see me um, I will give you an update on the um, the model stitch no pictures but I will give you an update on where I am with that and hopefully um, I will have worked on tiny overlord a bit too and be able to show that to you Momo is now behind the table and that's why the camera is shaking or she's behind the, the laptop and she's shaking the camera on the table yes so <laughs> with that I hope you all uh, I hope you all are doing well um, I hope you're staying safe and staying healthy and uh, you know I hope that I see you next time until then, have a great one.